The pharmaceutical industry is a complex and fascinating field. It takes countless of people to bring a high quality product to the market. In the Qualitox podcast, I bring to you leaders, experts and innovators who will share their experiences and explain to us how they do it. Welcome to the Qualitox podcast. I'm Ian Kugler, your host, and my guest today is Mr. Hitendra Kumar Shah. He is a pharmaceutical compliance consultant, CGMP trainer, and an auditor from NADH Plus GXP Compliance Services. He has over 21 years of experience in QC, QA, production, quality engineering, pharmaceutical regulations, and regulatory audit compliance. He came to me with a significant quality concern that may come to be due to the coronavirus lockdowns. Today, he will share information with us about consistent compliance plan, CCP, and its benefits for pharmaceutical manufacturing plants across the globe during the lockdown phase. Hiten, welcome to the Qualitox uh, podcast. Uh, it was uh, great uh, to uh, have your uh, message and uh, you wanted to talk to me about a very important issue that has to do with uh, the quality in the pharmaceutical production and the lockdown. So uh, first, uh, how are you doing, sir? Yeah, it's, it's, it's good. It's uh, going well with respect to the COVID-19 condition situation here also. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I'm glad that uh, you are okay. And uh, uh, so tell me, please, what lockdown and what restriction have uh, an effect directly on the quality of the product uh, from your point of view? So basically, the lockdown is impacting on all the activities of all the human beings staying in different countries. Specifically, if we think or if we work out with respect to the pharmaceutical industries, lockdown will impact on so many different aspects. The different aspects includes personnel, resources, the availability of the input materials, logistics and so on. So due to the controls or the lockdown situation, these all uh, different uh, supporting systems will get impacted and it will directly impact to the pharmaceutical manufacturing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, in uh, your point of view, how would those uh, events would impact uh, the quality and the, the compliance at this point? If we consider considering the lockdown situation and uh, restrictions and uh, uh, due to this all restrictions, the pharmaceutical companies really has to work hard to achieve the compliance level. The reason is this will not be a smooth functioning. So if it is a smooth functioning, so everybody is aware about the equation A plus B equal to C. But now here the scenario will be different. There will be a lot of deviations. There will be no smooth operations. The they may the pharmaceutical companies may require additional checkpoints or additional uh, inspection control to reduce the error or to reduce the non-conformance or to avoid the failures in the products. Mm -hmm. Uh, Why do you think that uh, there would be much more deviations? Because the reason, you know, the pharmaceutical industry will be working, first of all, with the less manpower. That is the one reason. Second aspect is manpower will be less addition to that, the people who will be working in the pharmaceuticals will be running under the weak moments because they may be somewhat stressed with respect to travel from home to the office and office to the home. Secondly, they need to be very much cautious about their family. So some family thought also will be there, uh, will be in the employee's mind. Third thing, availability of the less number of the people as required by normally what happened we take optimum number of employees but here in this case the optimum number may not be available due to the logistic problem so who, who the employees who are staying nearby the companies only can uh, join the work so in such a case due to this all the problem uh, you know the it will not uh, the pharmaceutical uh, companies will be more cautious or need to be more cautious with respect to the product failure errors and compliance 
Mm -hmm. So uh, what are uh, the challenges right now in, in uh, this regard and what should the companies uh, do to stay compliant? Could you give us uh, several examples for that? Yeah. Uh, if the pharmaceutical companies need to overcome this problem, I suggest that they can prepare a consistent compliance plan. The consistent compliance plan will be a brief or holistic approach or overall approach for achieving the compliance. How? This is very important thing. They need during this preparation of the consistent compliance plan, the pharmaceutical companies will need to evaluate what are the weaknesses of the uh, existing situation, what are the strongness of the people or the product. Then I'll say the what are the mitigation plans or the control plans identified during the quality risk management? What are the preventive actions resulted as a form of CAPA? Preventive action here, I mean to say the actions to avoid potential non-conformity to occur. That means the non-conformity which is not yet occur. So that preventive actions also they need to understand and considering all these aspect along with this aspect what are the things which are dependent or which are independent means pharmaceutical industries can prepare along with considering this aspect they can consider the dependency interdependency matrix means what are the activities the company or the people need to depend for example, what are the, there may be some outsource activity with, for that, they need to depend on that. So how they can overcome that outsource activities. There may be a lot of activities which are outsourced. So during this situation, how this can be under compliance? This all evaluation can be prepared in a one platform that I call it as a consistent compliance plan. As per this plan, the people of that particular company will move ahead. This compliance plan or I will call consistent compliance plan will be guiding all the people that where they can take the deviation, what type of deviation they can take it on immediate basis. Thirdly, now the deviations are taken but after two months or three months when the smooth functioning of the pharma will be there. So how they can again evaluate the deviation activities or suppose if any reduced testing is there, if it is proposed now during this period. So after two, three months, what will be the strategy for random sampling of the different batches and ensure the compliance once this lockdown is over. So this whole holistically approach of consistent compliance plan will support guide and make pharmaceutical companies to be under compliance and even not only this much but even after completion of this uh, lockdown period once this consistent compliance plan is executed a report can be prepared consistent compliance report and that will be suffice a uh, very good evidence that during this lockdown phase whatever the restrictions the pharmaceutical companies were having that all besides of all these restrictions and the problems still how the pharmaceutical companies can achieve the compliance level so how is it different from what the companies should already have in place great See, normally during the smooth functioning, all the uh, testing of the input materials, release, manufacturing, testing of finished product, in between there will be a lot of inspections, quality inspections and release, all activities will be there. But now here, there will be some problem. For example, some companies may go for reduced testing at some input raw materials reduce testing at some uh, input packaging materials some reduce testing at some in process stage level because considering the current scenario uh, 
and uh, use of uh, resources for the particular operation they can they need to do some uh, you know reduce testing now if today we are doing some reduce testing that need to be of course through deviation part i agree but after 2 3 months once lockdown period is over again that has to be evaluated whether it is having some adverse impact of reduce testing on our product or not this is the one aspect of testing second aspect is some activities may not able to perform in house so that particular activities companies need to think of to outsource outside third thing if any equipment required for manufacturing of the product may not be qualified completely but yes manufacturing is very important considering this covid 19 uh, uh, situation and the product is in a uh, urgent requirement in such a case without qualification also the product need to be manufactured need to evaluate the equipment performance and yes after lockdown period is over that qualification need to ensure whether it is complying or not other than that if it suppose any calibration activity or any outsource activity is not able to uh, the company is not able to perform currently so what are the alternate arrangement company can do for example take a simple example of pressure gauge if the company is not able to calibrate because the external agency cannot uh, come to the company and cannot do the calibration what are the other alternatives the first alternative may be they can uh, replace the gauge with the available uh, they, they can replace the critical identified gauges with the already calibrated gauges and the other gauge whatever the removed gauge that can calibrate afterwards or they can employ the person who is working in the calibration agency itself and they can do the calibration in house they can develop the procedure and they can do the calibration and i am just sharing some example so this way each company has to identify their weaknesses strongnesses the mitigation control plans preventive actions dependency versus interdependency matrix and on all the all all the bases they need to evaluate that how they can raise a minimum number of deviations with how they they will able to put controls or after uh, completion of this lockdown phase how the mitigation plan or how the uh, some additional testing or some additional controls can be evaluated so that whatever the uh, activities are completed during this phase will be free from non compliance free from any failure or free from any rejections in future also so you uh, propose that uh, manufacturers right now take the risk based approach to uh, most of the problems and the make need to make sure that they evaluate the batches that they have manufactured d- during the coronavirus again in a few months to make sure that uh, uh, there were uh, no um, problems that were uh, overseen yes mm-hmm. yes and uh, uh, how uh, how would you suggest, suggest that uh, such a based uh, risk based uh, approach uh, would uh, be performed see, see many companies are already doing or following the quality risk management principles as per ICHQ 9 guide the point is you know already the companies have done the quality risk management where some risk were identified and some control measures or mitigation plans are evaluated but currently due to the lack of resources lack of materials logistic issues and lot of lockdown issues whether that all control measures are really working currently or not that is very important because when the initial quality risk management was conducted that it was conducted considering the normal situation but now this is somewhat different situation so that quality risk management also need to be reviewed again mm-hmm. so and evaluated considering the situation mm-hmm. yeah so should they take a lot of time to do it right now 
or should they uh, look at the history after the quarantine is over? No, they uh, they should appoint some one or two senior people, and that people can go through these QRM preventive actions. Then, what are the weaknesses are there about our product? What are the strongness of our product, manufactured product? Then, what are our capabilities? That all they need to consider, and they can prepare a holistically consistent compliance plan, so that everybody will be ready. With the actions, ki yes, this activity we need to do it. Okay, let us do it. Raise the one deviation, go ahead and uh, follow the deviation and uh, follow the activities, execute the activities, and go ahead. After two months or three months, once quarantine or lockdown period is over, again we can the actions will be suggested in the consistent compliance plan itself that will enable or that will ensure that yes, whatever the deviation was taken. During that period, it will not impact on the product quality. Mm-hmm. So you mentioned that uh, because of the, uh, manpower shortage, people may not consider all the deviations uh, uh, correctly, or they uh, may not register all the deviations. So was it one of your concerns that some deviations uh, would uh, uh, just be ignored? No, no. My concern is that. Whatever deviations are going to be there in the pharma company during this phase, that should be uh, uh, put. Uh, that should be before happening. It should be evaluated. Mm-hmm. It should be work out that what type of deviations can possible mm-hmm. and what type of deviation we can allow. Mm-hmm. For example, use of. Tertiary packaging material. Okay, we can allow. Mm-hmm. So, uh, what you mean, also, if I understand correctly, uh, the approach for the manufacturing for now should uh, be ev- reevaluated, and uh, other new risks should be taken in, uh, into account, and some other minimal risks that uh, in uh, a daily uh, routine would not be allowed. In uh, such case of the crisis, sometimes we can allow them to happen when it has only a minor impact because we need to manufacture our products uh, quickly and there is a shortage. So uh, manufacturers should evaluate their current approach and ease on some uh, of the procedures in order to... Um, shift the uh, manpower to more critical uh, points uh, in the productions. Yes, absolutely. I will give a simple example. Yeah, like suppose yeah. if any, uh, any suppose new computer system software or computer system or software or some equipment comes. So all the companies will have some validation master plan. This plan will always help or guide or support all the people that how the equipment or a software or the instrument should follow the qualification requirement and if any deviation is there then what they need to do if any changes are there how that changes should be handled it it suffices uh, some guidance require guidance for all the people who are going to perform the validation activity similar way i suggest that we can prepare holistically the consistent compliance plan so that everybody will be understand will understand the requirement of the quality with respect to different areas different activities different in uh, monitoring aspects different inspections different checkpoints so that if it is see problem is not happened today but we should not wait the problem to happen after some days so with the during preparation of the consistent compliance plan this all points will be considered so that everybody re- will be ready with the guidance and so that everybody will have be supported with that consistent compliance plan so this will help that this will help to reduce or the avoid the non conformance product failure in future mm-hmm. so uh, what's uh, still missing for me what Uh, exactly should uh, companies uh, consider right now because as we uh, have said there is a, a manpower uh, shortage and usually uh, such uh, evaluations uh, take a lot of time and take a lot of people because uh, usually you need a team 
to sit and do the risk analysis. How should the, uh, the companies with uh, uh, a lower manpower, uh, with shortage, how should they approach and do it uh, uh, quickly, consistently, in, uh, with high quality? Okay, I understood your point. See, I don't want to engage a complete team because already we have a shortage of manpower. What I suggest, a senior team of two, two to three people can just sit and review whatever the risk management activities completed earlier. I don't want, I don't, I don't expect to do now. I just expect to review the earlier completed quality risk management activity and check whatever the mitigation plans are identified or in the CAPA, whatever the preventive actions are identified, whether all can be taken care now, considering the situation or not. What else uh, should uh, the companies do? Do you have uh, any additional ideas uh, for companies uh, to do, to stay compliant in the, those problematic times? Uh, yes, uh, I suggest as the people will be running under weak moments, secondly, the uh, timing of the work will also be restrictions will be there. So I suggest that there should be some more actions with respect to the quality oversight. I suggest the pharmaceutical senior management team can prepare uh, quality oversight procedures. Means they can prepare a separate schedule, a secret schedule. I will use the word secret schedule so that a particular as per that schedule, somebody from the senior management will visit the shop floor, go for Gemba and will check for the any non-compliance are there or not. They will inspect randomly whether any product problems or product or defects are there or not. This will not help for the inspection of the goods or the non-compliance, but this will help to make all the people be aware and alert so that Whatever the activities the employees are doing, they will be more focused. They they will be more focused, and uh, uh, you know they will they may not be again move in their uh, weak dilemma or the weak moments. This a uh, very important uh, pharm this action very important action pharma uh, companies can take. Another action addition to the this action uh, I would like to suggest that. The company need to have a very clear procedure about escalation of the quality events. Because normally everybody is aware that what type of quality event need to escalate at which level. But considering the less people and lesser activity with the requirement of the quality, I suggest that the reporting of the event should not be only one person. It should be escalated to N and N plus one level, means boss and super boss. So that if any any non-conformance or any failure or any product defect is observed or detected, it should not get missed. It should be tracked either by the boss or super boss. So that there possibility is that today the defect we are we feel that the defect is very small but maybe when after two months or three months it will go to market and we will come to know that the defect uh, is a very big and we may need to recall the product so now the our responsibility considering the pharma companies is to have a clear-cut procedure for escalation of quality events and that also to the n and n plus one level should they do it uh, also for uh, minor deviations? Yes, minor deviations also. The reason is uh, uh, people who will be working at the shop floor, they may think that it is a minor, but we don't know what will be its impact after two, three months. I will give a simple example. I am having a classic example of this. During aqueous coating of the uh, one tablet product, one operator identified that there is a small leakage from the uh, uh, from the tube which is carrying the coating solution. 
and due to that leakage a small drop by drop uh, coating solution aqueous coating solution was falling on the bed tablet bed it was for a very small time operator identified operator thought it is a minor deviation and that operator didn't escalate it to the supervisor or the senior staff so uh, after coating and then because as it is a minor in nature and he is uh, well trained about that so he just uh, stopped the operation replaced the tube and uh, operation was continued after operation after coating operation is complete all the tablets were inspected due to this defect some tablets were formed some rough surface that uh, coating defect tablets were uh, sorted out and uh, rejected destroyed due, the defect is also not so huge so automatically the good tablets were still within the yield limit so no yield investigation was complete con uh, conducted but due to due to this problem some tablets were from inside were having the higher moisture content and after that they were coated so from outside the tablets were looking good but what happened after 2 3 months when the tablets gone outside in some tablets customer found some fungal growth appeared on the tablet and when it is escalated to uh, reported to the fda the whole product was recalled because the reason is the defect now if it is inside the fungal growth nobody will come to know but fortunately the fungal growth was from outside then uh, you know uh, then the patient could detect so detective due to the low detectability and we don't know what will be the severity or what will be the defect extent of defect we don't know hence whole batch was recalled due to the small deviation because, hence during this phase my suggestion is whatever is the small or whatever will be the minor or whatever will be the major deviations all quality issues should be escalated at n and n plus one level during dispatch the reason is if the company is having capacity for running of 10 machines due to the lack of resources and manpower of course company may be running only two to three machines so there is no much a deal to escalate this type of defect or this type of problem also to the n plus one level but if we consider not to reach, not to escalate but if we consider this then tomorrow it may be a very serious impact on particular product or non-compliance also hence considering this current scenario i am telling again during this lockdown or the uh, quarantine situation the companies which are running they can have a uh, special escalation of quality events uh, procedure. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, so I find it uh, correct. I just hope that the companies really find um, the capacity to do it now and they should understand how important it is uh, to reconsider and rethink their uh, approach at such uh, crisis uh, situations. So thank you for uh, mentioning all that. Do you have some maybe more interesting examples or concerns on your side? At this moment, uh, I can I, I give only one example. There are a lot of examples like this. So only thing, uh, final without before final closing of this our discussion, I just uh, want to thank you and uh, I just want I just want to request all pharmaceutical manufacturing companies to ensure all time compliance. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, before we finish, I also I want to ask you another uh, question. Uh, let as look at the scenario, what happens if the companies don't follow your advice? The suggestion of preparing the consistent compliance plan, suggestion of taking more ac uh, action plan with respect to quality oversight and uh, taking the uh, pro preparing the process for education quality events is considering this current situation. If, suppose, this is not followed by pharmaceutical companies, possibility is that they, they will run behind each deviation left and right. So always there will be fire fighting situation. Oh, this is the problem. What are we need to do? Again, they need to run to the higher ups. Continuously, problems will be more. 
prob all problems they have to run to the higher ups and for each things they have to uh, run with the quality notifications continuously so it will be all you know in a not a systematic way somebody will run from the manufacturing side somebody will run from the packaging side somebody will run from the quality control side somebody will run from the warehouse side because they have not faced this type of problem they have not faced the scarcity of the material they have not faced the scarcity of the uh, testing materials so they will continuously run and due to this situation the problem is the company people may become panic this will help to avoid the panic situation second thing if we this uh, not followed and if people consider that people are matured enough and they can take care of very good but if suppose this is not studied now as a holistic approach the consistent compliance plan is not take, uh, prepared and not followed possibility is that some additional control mechanism where there are supposed to be there as a routine practice which may not been followed during this period due to the scarcity of the people due to this the risk identified may be very high risk but the manufacturing will be man running with this considering this high risk hence there may be possibility that now all the companies are stopped all the industries are stopped except the pharmaceutical industry but after 2 3 months when everything will be smooth that time regulators will ask the questions and definitely the companies may identify some more risk after 2 3 months but point is after 3 months if the risk is identified and do, during this risk all the products were manufactured then the impact assessment of all the products will be again a big task and to prove that all products complying as per the standards or in line with the specifications and acceptance criteria so it is it will again the big activity to ensure all the products after 2 3 months so instead of being a reactive approach i suggest to have a proactive approach and as per this proactive approach the preparation of the consistent compliance plan is a prime importance secondly quality oversight procedures is the additionally important and uh, in addition to that they can have the escalation of quality event okay mr chef thank you very much uh, for all this information and uh, the great guidance uh, for uh, the pharmaceutical companies uh, worldwide thank you thank you and ensure all time compliance thank you i hope you found this episode of the qualitox podcast interesting and informative if you did consider subscribing so you don't miss new episodes Stay compliant and see you in the next one.